This is another video using Luminar AI and again this is the beta copy but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a single image edit using only the edit tools. So let's dive right in. Okay, so this is the layout for the edit tools. And as you know, at the top, you have essentials, creative, portrait, and professional. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this image using that and also using the local masking, just to let you see how that works. And up at the top as well, you can add more local masking. But I'm going to show you how to break this down into editing this image. So we have this image here, which is a finished image anyway, but I'm going to edit it just to show you what the software can do. So the first thing, because it's a portrait, I'm going to dive straight into portrait. Within this, we have face light, slim face, mouth, lip saturation, redness and everything down there. We also have, as you, if you've watched the last video, how we can change the eye colour. But what I'm going to show you is, because we're using local masking, how to use the eye colour without affecting what I'm going to do to the image. So, one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the lip saturation slightly. Again, with myself, it's always subtle, unless I'm changing the colours totally. Uh, so the lip redness, I'm going to increase. So you can see that coming through there, a quick before and after, so that you can see how much that's done. And then I'm going to darken the lips slightly with this one. So I'll just go for that there. Before and after. And I'll keep showing you the before and after so that you can see how things are progressing. What I want to do with this image is I want to change the hair colour. And I have to do that globally so that it affects the entire image, so that using the masking, tools, as in the local masking, I can paint it into the areas I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into colour. And the first thing I'm going to do, and you'll notice there's a slight difference here from the other software, which is Luminar 4.3. Again, Luminar AI is a completely new software. So I'm going to pull this hue shift back to a nice, comfortable colour that I think I can work with. And I'm going to go for around about there. I can see that there's a change in the colour in there. I'm also going to increase the vibrance slightly. If I now go into the masking brushes, I can apply that to the areas I want. And in this case, it's just the hair. So I'm going to take the opacity up to around about 70%, 70-80%, and I'm just going to paint it in there. And the reason I haven't got it at 100% is because for now, I think, once before I paint it, that I want some of the underlying natural colours to come through. So we'll see how it looks once I've painted it. I may change it. That looks okay. That actually looks quite natural. Uh, as if she's had her hair dyed. So I'm going to paint down there. Paint in here. I'll take the brush size down. Again, universal keys for the brush size. Which is the square brackets. Take that down in there. And I'll take it down there. And when I'm up here. I'm just going to paint very gently there because we don't want this to bleed onto the skin too much. So I'm going to take the opacity down for this last part in here just to see how it looks. We want a natural look for this. The more I paint, the heavier, the more intense the colour gets. So I have to be careful of what I do now with this. So again, I would drop the opacity again just to fill in the smaller areas so that it looks natural and that's perhaps just too much there of an opacity I'll take that back up so we have done that and that is the hair I'll leave it at that for the purposes of this video so here's the before and after I'll just turn off that so there's the before here's the after so you can see a difference straight away, and it does actually look quite natural. Yes, there is some reflected colour onto her forehead there, but that you may get away with. If you don't think you will, jump back into the masking brush, choose the arrays, don't make the size too big, but take the opacity right down, and just take your time to paint it back out. So you get the idea with that. I'm going to take it down there. With that colour of hair, you probably would get a reflected colour onto the skin. So I'll just leave it at that for the purposes of this video. 
So that's us. We have went in, changed the hair colour. We haven't touched the eyes yet. We've changed the lips. Yes, this is taking longer than the templates, but I wanted to show you that it can be done as well in this manner. So the next thing I'm going to do is go into AI Enhance because I want to enhance the hair, the eyes and the lips. So not too much for this. So there, you can see that there. Quite happy with that. I am then going to get into the local masking brush and I will paint with an opacity of around, say, 50% for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it over the eyebrows just to give slight definition there. Yes, this can be done in the portrait panel, but I'm going to show you here, just depending on how you edit, you may be a photographer that prefers to edit manually. That is entirely up to you. So I'm just showing you that it still can be done with this software. When I'm doing this, the software is meant to help people that perhaps don't have time to edit and don't really enjoy the process as well. It depends how you work. It might be the, one of the mainstays of the process for you. For me, it is. I prefer this. I prefer the local editing because I have control. But with the templates, I still have control. So I just want to make that clear that there is a, a difference, but there's also a synergy between the two. So I've increased everything there. I'll just show you the before and after, before and after. I haven't touched the lips with this one. If I go into AI structure now, again, I can increase the structure again, but it would be subtly. There is a subtle difference. The biggest jump was in here. Do I want to paint it in just to those areas? In this case, just to here? Yes, why not? So I'm going to take the local masking brush and you can see that we have paint mask, radial gradient or gradient mask. I'm going to work with the paint mask here. And again, my opacity radius and everything is set for this. So I'll just quickly paint over this just to show you. And nothing special about it, but it's just so that you get the idea that all this can be built up manually if you prefer to work manually with this. For me just now, I'm going to leave it and I'm going to jump straight into the portrait. So if I now go into portrait, as I said previously, you have face light, slim face, iris, everything going through there. So the original, so what I can do now is I can go in and enhance areas in here. So I could add a face light if I wanted. That works okay, I'll just leave it at that. I'm then going to enhance the eyes even further, being careful that it doesn't look unnatural. So I'm going to remove dark circles, not that there's many there, if any, but that's it. I'm going to leave it as subtle as that. Improve eyebrows. Well, you know that I've already enhanced the eyebrows, but let's go for it. Just add more contrast to it. Again, before, after, before, after. What I did say I would do is I'm going to change the eyes. But as you know, if I change the eyes here, what will happen is, and then I paint everything back in, I've got to spend my time painting everything back in. I've, these adjustments that I've just made, for example, the lip saturation, the lip redness, lip darkening, face light, I've got to paint all that back in. But I only want to affect the eyes. And this is where you have another tool that you can use, which is the local masking. And I can add this on top of this again. So with the local masking, go up to the top and click Add. And now I can add basic edits, uh, skin AI, face AI, details and texture. So for this one, I am going to go into the face AI. Knowing that within the face AI, I have eyes. So I am going to change the eyes. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this in. I could go through blue, brown, green, brown worked well. Uh, but I'm going to choose mint for this one. With this local masking brush, again, I have the opportunity of softening the effect. And already I've a, applied, if I open this back up here, already within the portrait tools, I've applied different effects to the face. So I now want to apply another effect just to the eyes alone without affecting what I've done while using masking, if that makes sense to you, if you imagine it in layers, it would make sense. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to take the opacity, I'm going to go for about 70-80% and I'm going to take the brush down. It's just to soften this effect slightly. That's the only reason instead of leaving it like that and being quite happy, it's just to soften the effect slightly. So 
going to paint in there. And I'm, again, I'm using the mouse for this. And I'm going to paint in there. And for me, if you watched the last video, this is all in real time. So any pauses or any updates is real time. You saw the specs of the computer in the last video. I also may now want to increase the iris flare in this. So I'm just going to push that just so that you can see what's happening with the image. And what I'll do is I'll come back out of there and I will show you the before and after, before and after. The lips don't work with this one, but it just lets you see how it all comes together. If I decided I didn't like that, I can just go up to this face and click close. And all those edits I did to the eyes and only the eyes would go. Then I would have to go up and click add. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a slight texture to this background. So I'm going to go in and go add. This time I'm going to go down to texture. So now that I'm in the local masking and texture side of this, I can load a texture in, and this could be anything. For this example, I am just going to choose background one. And I'm going to click open. And that's going to drop in over the image. And again, I only want to apply it to that edge there without affecting the rest of the image. So what I can now do is I can go in and paint in the area I want the background to be. So I'll take the paintbrush and I'll take the size up. And again, when you are painting this, it would be a good idea to drop the opacity back and paint close to the model first with a lower opacity, like so. And 10 might not be enough, so we'll see in a second. Then take the opacity up and do the same again. That way you'll get a nice blend when you are painting these in. So you'll see the texture beginning to appear now. I'm going to take the opacity up. This time I'm not going to work from the ear. I'm going to work from the outside in towards her face. Knowing that I'm building up the opacities. That perhaps is a bit too much. So I'm going to take it back and then work there. So you can see how that's all coming together for that. And I'll paint back over that one. We now have an added texture into the background. So you can see that it is subtle, but it is there. I can now jump out of here and get back into light. So from there, and just to finish off the image, I could add a vignette if I wanted. So I'll just add a slight vignette. Not that it's needed, but just to show you that there is a familiarity with the tools. Choose subject. Click in there and then add a slight vignette in there or choose it there and it will darken this and darken that and for this i'm going to leave it at that hopefully this video lets you see that you can still work in luminar ai without using templates and you can still have single image edits using the edit panel and you can work although layers aren't there anymore there is a slight comparison with the masking brushes and how the masking works. So it may just mean you have to change your thinking on things ever so slightly. But as you saw, it doesn't take long to do and it's worth a practice just to see how you'll enjoy using the software. Big thank you again for everyone that watches the videos and for subscribing as well. It really means a lot and the likes really help the channel grow. So thanks again for that. Remember, stay safe and I'll see you in the next video.